Let us take a quick look at how to use RStudio. The moment you start RStudio, you see an interface that looks something like this. Yours may not look exactly like this. But what you see is on the left hand side, you see a pane called console. And this is the place where you type commands and see the results of those commands from RStudio, especially any textual results that RStudio produces or R produces. Okay, so for example, you can see here that I have executed the code uh, x is assigned the value 5 and that means that the value 5 is put into the variable x and you know our studio has done the job and come back to the command prop the greater than sign which you're familiar with right now and the environment tab on the right hand side shows you all the objects that we have created during a particular session so for example I'm seeing that the object x is now present and its value is shown here that's what the environment tab does okay it shows you all the objects in your workspace. So right now uh, you're working inside an R workspace and whatever objects you create are all being created inside this workspace. Think of it sort of like a, a worksheet in Excel. Okay, It's very roughly analogous to, to something like that. Okay, So that's what the uh, environment pane is for. The history pane simply shows you a history of all the commands that were executed. So here as soon as I came in I did I, I set the working directory to this particular directory so that command is being shown here and then this command in which I assign the value 5 to x so those are the two panes of importance on the top right okay um, on the bottom right you see a pane which itself has several tabs okay so the files tab of course is uh, it simply mimics your file explorer on your computer so you can navigate to any directory and see all the files that are contained in that particular directory. That's what the files uh, tab does. The plots tab, as you already know, shows you the results of any plotting commands that you might execute within R or RStudio. In this course, we are going to be spending a lot of time in this area. The packages tab shows you all the packages, R packages, that you have installed on your computer. Okay, shortly we'll have a discussion, a uh, short discussion about R packages. But the whole idea is that R is an extensible system. When you install R, it comes with a certain amount of functionality. And not all the available functionality is actually loaded into the system for us to be able to use it, right? That is because, you know, when you start using R, you're not going to be wanting all of the functionality that it provides. And therefore, R initially loads up with a basic set of features okay which would be things like you know linear regression computing means and medians and doing all these common operations that are performed on data all of those load up any additional features you want to use uh, you need to you will do that by loading additional packages okay so what this is showing you is all the packages that are installed on your system okay so these are all packages which are installed on your system and they are not necessarily loaded. Packages which are loaded would be shown with a check mark. Okay, so if I scroll down, I see here is a package called datasets. That is shown checked. That means that that package is loaded. What does it mean for a package to be loaded? Well, if a package is loaded, what it means is that any functionality that is contained in that package is available for us to use in our commands. If a package is not loaded, the functionality of the package is not available for us. So for example, uh, there is a package here. You can see there's a package, it's called, it's called dplyr. And right now it is showing you the dplyr is not loaded, which means that although the dplyr package is installed, and although it has a lot of functionality, right now I'm not in a position to use any of those functionalities or features because I have not loaded the package. Okay, so it's a simple matter to load a package. I can just go here and simply check it and the package will get loaded. So for example, suppose I check this dplyr. Okay, so notice that the command library, etc, etc got uh, executed and the package is loaded and I now have access to all the features that dplyr provides. Okay, so that's the idea of loading a package which is already installed. Right, but then comes the question, there may be many packages out there which are not even installed on your computer yet. Okay, which means that uh, there are some packages. Let's say some very new uh, algorithm for doing something comes out and somebody has written a new package 
Okay, so you can now go and get that package by installing the package. There are two ways you can install a package. One is by just doing, clicking this button install and typing the name of the package you want to install. Right, automatic question is, well, how do I know the name of the package that I need to install? Well, simple matter, just go to Google and search for, let's say, our package to do something. Okay, some something, well, let's say you want to do neural networks, right? So you can say, uh, our package for neural networks. And then the Google search results will point you in the direction of what is the name of the package that contains that functionality. You can then come here, hit the install button, type the name of the package and off you go. You've got the package, uh, you know, R will go out to the web, to the internet, pick up the package, install it, and then of course you can load the package just like I showed you here and you're off and running. Okay, so that's the way in which you extend the functionality of R. Okay, so many times what I, people ask me, uh, you know, when I'm teaching classes, people ask me, can R do X? Can R do this? Can R do that? Most of the time the answer is yes, R can do anything related to computation. It's a computational package. It started off as mainly a statistical package, but all kinds of computations are possible to be done in R. So whatever it is, it can be done. There's no problem. There's some package out there which will actually do the job. So it's a matter of us finding the correct package and figuring out how to use it. Okay, so that's the important feature of the packages tab here. It allows us to see the installed packages and load and unload packages. Uh, the plots, as you already know, uh, this shows us any plots that we may create, any charts that you may plot during our R session, they will show up here. And files, of course, replicates your uh, file explorer. It allows you to navigate your file system on your computer. Okay, so at this point, I guess pretty much this is all I want to show you. Just a couple of more features. So for example, suppose I read a data file, you already know how to do this. Let's say I'm going to read a data file into this variable called auto. Auto is read.csv and then I'm going to type the name. I can do auto and the good thing is that uh, RStudio has code completion so I can just type partially auto and press the tab key and it went and filled up the rest right because it knows that this is my default working directory it knows that there is a file called auto mpg.csv so I did auto and then press the tab key it it would have gone and shown me all the files that match this particular pattern it so happened that there's only one file that started with auto so it automatically filled it up okay so that is something that our studio can do so the moment I do that I've got the variable auto uh, containing all the data in this particular file auto mpg.csv and of course as we expect uh, it is the command that I issued is showing up in our history and if I go to the environment I'm also going to see auto here okay so the data frame that we created is a new object in our workspace it's showing that and if I click on the arrow next to auto I'll see this now this is familiar to you uh, because you've been using the str command to see what uh, a particular object contains to see specifically for data frames what are the variables and what sample values do they contain and that you can see directly from your environment tab. Another small thing I would like to point out is that when you've got a data set like this so for example if I click on auto it's going to show me the data set right here okay so I can see the rows the columns and navigate through that. Another nice thing that uh, you might not have seen so far is suppose you have an R file okay which a file containing R code so for example I see here I've got a file called example.r so a file with .r extension usually contains R code okay so if I just click on it then the file opens right here okay the file opens in a tab here so the first tab was showing our auto data frame and the moment I clicked on example.r here, that showed up right here. Okay, so this file, this particular file contains three R commands. Now the beauty is I can execute those commands right from within there. So for example, I position my cursor within, you know, on a particular line and then I can hit this button called run. Okay, there's a button called run. In fact, if the window was slightly bigger, you would see the name of the button written on it. So if I click that, automatically the command gets executed and I see the results right here and the cursor goes on to the next command okay or if I do str empty cars 
it executes that and then it goes to the next command or if I do summary empty cars it executes that command and goes on okay now the reason I point this out is uh, that for our class sessions I will be giving you the code that you that that I'm demonstrating during the class right so you will have all the code available to you and as I am lecturing or as you're watching the video it would be possible for you to experiment with the code you don't need to type in the code you can just execute the code from right within the source pane this is called the source pane uh, the you know text document which contains uh, our code and you can just execute it by pressing uh, the the curse uh, pressing that button it's going to execute the commands uh, execute the command on the current line and go on to the next command because it's possible that a command may span multiple lines so it'll go on to the next line okay so those are all the important features that I wanted to show you about our studio so when you interact with our studio what you're doing is called as an R studio session so you've you've had a session where you worked with R now when you want to exit the system you can use the menu option to exit the system so here I'm going to uh, use the file menu option uh, or I'm going to just quit our studio at this point you can quit it by just closing the window as well now when you do that the system is going to pop up and uh, show you some things that were unchanged okay you may not see this workspace image our data not saved etc okay or you might see this I, I don't recall how the Windows version works I'm on a Mac okay so it's showing you that there are two files which are not yet saved for example example dot r has not been saved right I might have made some change to the files after reading it and the workspace image itself is not saved okay that is uh, the I, I told you already that we are working in a workspace of course we've made some changes to the workspace we've read a data file and stuff like that so it says it's not saved you have the option of saying don't save anything or you can say save selected so I'm saving this and I say save selected and it saved that and it exited okay now the point is that the moment you have exited that what happens is that your whole workspace is saved and the next time if you start our studio from the same directory where the workspace was actually saved right so what will happen is that it will read uh, the workspace and you will come to the same point where you were when you exited right so for example that auto data frame would be available everything would be there so it's as if you just brought back to the point at which you exited so you'll be able to do that once you save the workspace once you just select the option to save the workspace and next time if you start our studio from that same place it'll work right of course I have uh, uh, already shown you that a good practice for you would be to set your working directory globally right that is you set the working directory from the R studio uh, you know global preferences option and once you do that every time you start R studio it's going to start in that particular directory and every time you quit if you save the workspace it's going to get saved there so what will happen is you'll get a seamless way of working with R studio every time you start you will be at the point where you ended the previous time okay so in this lesson you've looked at all of these things in terms of uh, what we want to do with our studio the next thing I want to quickly show you is about packages we've already spoken a little bit about our studio packages and what the how they work so here I'm just showing you that first of all you have your computer let's say this is your computer within that computer is a running our program just like we had an our studio program and some packages are already loaded into your pack into your our studio environment so when you start our automatically some packages are loaded not all the packages are loaded okay so which means that all the commands all the functions that are available in that particular pack in all the loaded packages you can use okay but suppose you want to use some functionality which is part of a package that is not loaded then your job is to load the package and of course you can only load a package which is already installed on your computer so what happens when you install R studio on your computer many packages get installed by default and when you then go ahead and start our studio some of those packages are loaded not all of them are loaded right so now you can go ahead and use the command library use the fun library function to load additional packages or alternately as I showed you in the R studio uh, packages uh, tab in the bottom right you can go and simply check 
the package that you want to load. So when you do that, the package that you want gets loaded and all the commands and all the functions and features of those package, the loaded package are now available to us. Okay. But then what if you've got a package which is not yet even installed on your computer, right? So that is when you use, to use the install.packages command or you use the install option on RStudio, right? To install a particular package and then RStudio will go out to the internet to a place called what is called the CRAN repository okay and from that CRAN repository it will pick up the required package that you've packaged and packages that you've asked for and it will install them on your computer. Now once those packages are installed on your computer you can then go ahead and load those packages by using the library function or by checking check marking in RStudio and then you'll be able to use those packages. Okay, it is also possible, you know, for example, let's say in Verizon, you people start using RStudio a lot uh, and maybe for your own internal purposes, you develop some packages which are completely private, right? So all these packages in the internet, they are all public. Anybody can use them for free, right? But you might want to develop some proprietary packages for Verizon's internal use alone. You can do that. It is possible to develop packages for uh, you know and store them in the form of files and then you can load packages simply from files okay now in our courses we're not going to be actually talking about the process by which you would actually create a package uh, but it is possible 